make it more of the same. So if I go like this and like this, and now it's that same distance that I had when I did it on this one, even though it's smaller. See that same? And you can get a pretty good sense of this as you practice this. This is what we're talking about practicing. Okay, so it's out here. So I'm gonna make those as landmarks to remind myself that's the width and the height. That's very important. And you know, I know this is like beating a dead horse, but this it's, it's there's a reason why I am because this is the this is the stuff that most people pass up. And this is where you're going to get your most likeness. A lot of people don't believe that until they do it. So I can I can put it in sort of a, a box shape. This is kind of like gridding it out. And again, like uh, like Alonga was saying, if you wanted to grid out, you know, draw lines on this, even if it were a center line, and put a box around it. Then you could put the box around this. That could really be helpful. Okay, so I'm just going to start making my best guess. I'm working with angles. That's what I love about these these planar heads. They have all these angles, and for some reason, it's a we can see these angles a little bit better when things are turning. By the way, the top of the the top of the head, the top of the skull. If you notice, the highest point of the head is back here, back here in the back of the head, not here. A lot of times people will draw, draw a head, uh, you know, say like a, like a profile of a head, and they'll put the, they'll put the top of the, the, the highest part of the head in the center. It's actually back here, and then there's a slope, and the head slopes down like this. So that's the cranium back here. Highest parts back here. It's the highest parts back here. Matter of fact, if you put your hand on top of your head and then you bring your hand out, you'll see that it slopes forward. It doesn't, it slopes forward. So keep that in mind if you're taking little notes. Now, at some point, if I've got my width versus my height correct, then I want to find this line, and you could draw this right on your reference if you want. And it, it, it's a line that will show me the center, and it's going to be a bit of a curved line because the head's curving. It's not a straight line, but it's a bit of a curved line. You see, I'm drawing it in here, so it picks up the center of the forehead, center of the nose, center of the lips. Center of the chin. That's important. That's very important for a three-quarter view. This this will save you so much, so much grief and so much hassle and so much changing later on. If you can get that and just draw it right on your reference, I would recommend as you're learn we're learning this. And then I've got to decide how far maybe this point here. Well, before I even get to that. I've got to figure out where it is coming in into here. Where's the, um, you know, how far in is that on mine? I can I can see these little measurements here. Now, of course, this is smaller. I know, but it's, it's so I've got to size it up a little bit. But smaller adjustments, smaller, you know, if you can move uh, where there's uh, finding smaller adjustments. Your eye can pick those up pretty accurately. Like if I can find the top of the head here. Angle. Look at the eye level. Making my best guess here. And then I'm going to make a guess here where the center line is. And I can see, you can see where it picks up. If you draw it right on your reference, you can see it's just that far from the corner, right there. That far from the corner. I 
want to be very intentional and purposeful with that line. That is really important, and you'll read about that. And if I have to, I might even shift some of my edges over here to get that where it needs to be. Now, I'm just like the second step in your first drawing you did, you want to find these tick marks. Where's the top of the eye? Where's the bottom of the nose? Where are the lips? Where's the chin? And I always make my best guess. I'm guessing there's the bottom of the nose. I'm going to guess, or at least just visually, I'm going to visually guess, because they're all guesses. We get better at our drawing. This is the, I'm, I'm seeing that, that line right there. And this is really important too, that you're making these tick marks and that you don't move forward. Don't move forward in your painting until these tick marks are in the right place. This is the lightness. This is where you're gonna get the lightness the most. Not when you're doing a detail of an eye. It's too late. It's too late at that point. And, uh, and then you've got back here. I, sometimes I'll take on a three quarter view, I'll take that, that line, kind of see how it kind of travels around. Maybe, maybe like I'll just draw, I'm dr sort of drawing right on top of my, my, my sketch here as well, or my reference, right around, you know, this line that goes around where the top of the ear would go. I'm going to follow that, see how it goes with the angle. I can follow that. And I know the ear's going to be coming out further because this was right here. So the ear's coming out a little bit here like this. Sometimes I'll draw these lines like here, this little bit of triangulation. If I were to draw a line that's the, the right angle, check that angle. Does it line up with where I'm going here with the bottom of the lip here? So you can do in a really systematic way, finding these major landmarks. That's again, that's gonna give you the greatest lightness of what you're doing. This is so important that, that People just pass up. Okay, now I'm going to check. Now I'm going to check. Now that I've got my tick marks of where the bottom of my nose is, um, you know, the bottom of my nose, my lip lines, center, bottom, just the chin comes in here. Let's see this. This is a guess, but I'm just going to put it in for right now. So I have something to work with. And then let's check. Let's, let's check. So we could say, hmm, if we go from the bottom of the nose, if we got this correct, which we assume we do because we've done those overall proportions. So that's a known. That's a known now. We're correct. That's correct. So I might say there's different ways you can do this, but let's just try it here. Let's say look from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin, bring that up, is about the same to that point, or if I keep going up, it's a little higher than the overall height of the head. So, so two of these, one, well, I should say three total, but if, if we counted one, Two, see how it goes over top of the head. If I try mine and see if it does the same thing. One, two, over top of the head. About the same. So I'm, that means I'm seeing that pretty accurate. Might be a little bit. And by the way, we know that once we start drawing and we start getting our angles in and where the features are and the angles, that we can keep making these adjustments before we get to the details, before we get to the really cool stuff, because you're gonna, the more that you put down here, the more information you put down here, the more that information will be reflected back to you of what to solve. It's giving you more information of what's not uh, exactly correct. And maybe, maybe moving this a little bit here, moving that a little bit there, right? So, so don't get too worried that, that these have to be even uh, perfect before you move forward, because because you're going to keep doing adjustments throughout the whole thing. That's what you're going to learn is, is you keep adjusting and as you move throughout the whole, the whole thing here. So, um, but if you do this slowly, as, as we were talking, and, and, the, and the, the ideas that Brian was making about you know, wanting to get faster, that's true. But the, the, the way you just intentionally 
purposefully, uh, and I would even say patiently, maybe not necessarily slowly, but patiently, purposefully, and intentionally doing what I'm doing at this stage of the game, no matter what level you're at, if you feel like you've been doing this for a long time or you're just barely starting out, it's going to improve your paintings. I'm quite sure of it. But most people don't do it, so their paintings don't, don't improve. And they say, Adamson, I'm not getting any better. And I'm saying, well, are you doing this hard stuff at the very first? Not really. It's not really necessary. Okay, well, you know. And then I just go on their way. So <laughs> this, is, uh, this is so important. This is a hard work that a lot of people aren't willing to do. Uh, okay, now, let me show you. So let's just say, if I, if I go back and, and I can say, okay, this, this distance is correct. I can check these distances. Maybe I check this distance. Or maybe I check what do I got from the bottom of the chin to the top of the lip. And if I do that in something else that's already established, that's correct, then I can say, well, uh, you know, maybe if I get the top of that keystone and I put my guess there, then I can check that distance. How many of those maybe go, you know, I, I sometimes I'll find some distances that are similar to each other. Like I noticed that, that this, if I find where that top of the keystone is right there, and I measure that, or even right here where I find this uh, intersection of the nose here where it comes into the keystone, I find that that distance right there is similar to the bottom of the chin to the bottom of the nose. So I'm always trying to find similar distances to compare to each other. That's so helpful. You see how that's almost the same as that? So if I can do that on mine, then I say that from there should be the same from that to that line. You see how mine's too high. So I might have to give myself a little bit of distance here, or maybe I have to drop something. But I know that they need to be the same. That's going to be helpful. So finding similar distances to measure off of. Okay, I'm going to just keep moving here. So, uh, so the back here, if I've got this the, the width here, I might check my width again. Weird things happen, so I'm always checking these things again. See if I've got this still in check. About the same. Let's just paint for a while here. And sometimes painting is just making your best guess, but thinking in terms of, you know, where things are lining up. Where's the, if I were to do a horizontal, always find horizontals. Even if you don't put a, even if you don't put a whole grid if you don't put a whole grid on your on your reference, put some horizontals like where the ear is, for example. Then you see if it, where it's lining up. What's that lining up with? Well, I can see the top of the ear is lining up with the just at the top of the eyelid. That's really good information, right? If I know if I've got my ear in the right location, and I can check that, I can even go uh, maybe from this point here. Looks like it's about the same. From that point to that point is about the same. So let's see if it's the same as mine. About the same, so I can check that. And then if I do a horizontal, just put these guidelines right in your painting. Stick them right in there. Then you can sit. Then we already know that if I could find this distance here, here's the keystone, and I'm working off these things that I already know. And I can see that where that corner of the eye is, that landmark. I'm creating little landmarks for myself, and I can make that adjustment there. And I'm not doing the eye right yet. I'm just going to think of these as as uh, like a skull, like just the shape, the whole, the, like the whole of the eye, the socket. Angle, angle, angle. You notice how I'm holding my brush. Let's 
nice and I'm actually using I'm actually using my shoulder I'm not doing this I'm, I'm using my shoulder see all of this on my arm is all one unit and I'm moving from my shoulder the socket in my shoulder I notice the bottom of the ear is a little bit higher than what I'm showing but as long as you give yourself some grids and you and you get some areas that are correct and then you find other things on top of those things you can keep building your drawing on these proportions angle you can find angles you guys have any questions or comments while I'm working just let me know so what I'm doing I'm not going to take this I'm going to just get this drawing in mostly and then let you guys go at it but I'm just I mainly want to show you how I'm setting this up at the initial stages because it's so so important I do this every time whether someone's sitting in front of me or whether I'm working from a floor reference same thing every time. I'm going to get it more accurate. The thing I like about these lines that are the are the plane lines is that there's certain there's uh, there's certain angles to them, and I can find those angles. Turning the form of the head. I can already tell that I'm getting too much space down here. And see, that's happening because I'm getting more information down. I'm gonna treat this whole thing as an eye socket. So for example, if, uh, if I were to draw this, even though that's a soft line right there, This is a really important part of uh, portrait painting too. That I'm going to follow that once I get that shape. See, I can see that as a shape. I'm not thinking about eye here, folks. Nothing about eye. That's just that's going to goof me up. My left brain's going to get in here and it's go. Oh, I know how to draw an eye. It looks like this. Not really. Not as, that's not nothing what I'm looking at here. So, so, but I do see that shape, and I squint down, and I lose all this. I don't want to do that yet. And if it helps to sort of fill things in as you go, that's fine. See, that shape will be really important once I get to putting a little more detail in that eye. Like a mask, like a cat mask or something, Batman. Now on a three quarter view, you can see this point and this point, if you're looking at this guy straight on like you did last time, they would be level, right? They would be totally horizontal. But they're not three quarter view. We're kind of this is kind of above our. I mean, our eye level would probably be somewhere down here if we're thinking in terms of perspective. But up here, they're at an angle, right? So look at those. If I were to draw the head, and this is why this is where your perspective comes into play when you do. Let me draw this head in perspective as a box. Remember doing those little boxes in your Foundation One drawing class? And there's a reason for that. You can put anything you want in a box. You see, and so if I were to put the eyes here, the nose, and the mouth, there's the center line. It's like the head's a box. And if this is the, 
horizon line, which is probably my, my eye level, anything above that, like you learn in foundation one, those lines are going to go down to the vanishing points here somewhere. Anything below is going to go up. So part of this part of this head, wherever the person that took this photo, is above my eye level. So there's you can find these angles. By the time we get down here, it's going to be probably, you know, where the mouth level is here. These shapes down here, they're a little bit more level, but this one is starting to turn up because it's a little bit below my eye level so that's going to go up where these will meet somewhere at a vanishing point off of here somewhere so perspective comes into play keep keep that in mind Even though I see a lot of these little planes and triangles and things, I'm keeping things pretty simple for right now. I'm just trying to find the big stuff. This is the bottom right now I'm working on this. This is one big shape right here, like a triangular shape. The bottom of the nose. So all of this over here, if I were to find the shadow edge, the shadow edge is coming along like this, along like this, around like this, here, 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 little cast shadow there, here, and there. You see, so, so the dark is on this side. So we're seeing the light side of the head. This is all part of the light family. This is a little bit in shadow because it's, because the head, the light's overhead. But, uh, but the, the main shadow edge that we were trying to find on our first and second assignment, here, 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 here. And this is where I really slow down and spend some time. Here. Cast shadow there. You'll notice something since I've been drawing, my center line drifted a little bit, or my drawing drifted. You notice where my center line is? And that's okay, I've just given myself more information, and if it drifts, then you can restate it. draw a line so at least if I've got that nose established and I know where it's at spend a lot of time on that line I got to sometimes it, it wouldn't drift if I were to be a little more careful but see how it goes right through the little fulcrum part of the little indentation of the mouth there and you'll notice that on a three-quarter view this is a foreshortening your left brain doesn't know what to do with it because there's just a little tiny distances on one side of the mouth and longer distances on the other side of the mouth well we know that the the center of the mouth the left brains well that's the eat those are equal in size but not from this view this is a perspective view so so again I'm going back here I just Back to the center, back to the um, shadow line, because I needed to. I saw, I saw I was drifting there. So I see how I made that correction. Didn't take that long. Little corrections. And by the way, my eyes bouncing back and forth like this. I'm like playing ping pong match with my eye every time. I I, I never look at this longer than two or three seconds. Most people will look at their drawing and get down here like this and then just go for like a half an hour. And then they come back and they look at their reference and they're like, oh, everything's wrong. 
That's why I have this so close because I'm just bouncing back and forth and you will get better. This is a skill. This again, this is a skill that a lot of people never pick up. This is a skill of looking and looking correctly and looking efficiently so that your looking is, is, is so efficient that you're, you're bouncing back and forth and I'm almost drawing. Sometimes I'm almost drawing while I'm bouncing back and forth, looking at these small shapes and and I'll get them so much more accurate with practicing that. That's how you get things accurate. Just back and forth. My eyes, you can't see my eyes, but my eyes in that short time right there have gone back and forth about 10 times. Like they're darting back and forth. And I'm really trying to show you the speed. Or the if you're working faster than this, than I'm working right now, slow down. There's no race to be the first one finished. I'm not asking you how quick you're able to do this. Matter of fact, I might give a prize out for the one who spends the most time. Efficiently. <laughs> But you see how I'm getting things, every everything accurate the first time because I'm way, and I'm making just a little adjustments as I go that are necessary, right? Uh, and again, it's a skill. We're all learning it. Just a little bit of a half tone. I can see that there. Q-tips are good. I'm actually showing you, uh, yet last time we did uh, white paint, white and black paint, so now I'm showing you a little bit of a, what we call a wipeout technique. So you can, you can wipe away or add the values that you need. You can always get into some white paint if you need to. I just had to redo this line right here. And again, for some of you who want to get faster, this is the way. You will get faster. You will get faster in time. It just, um, this is because you're learning and you're learning it correctly. You're, you're, you're finding the major patterns, major now this, this one doesn't have black behind it. It's actually lighter behind here. I do have this actual image that's up on the, uh, that's actually uh, on the uh, assignment site. So, so if you wanted to say like a Q-tip or a corner, even if you, if, even if you took a corner of the uh, paper towel, like a little kneaded eraser, you could come in here and cut and draw So if my drawing is correct, and I and this is about the time where I'll look through it, look at it through the mirror, get your mirror out, spend some time looking at the mirror, reflection in the mirror, I should say. If everything's lining up, then I'm going to go through and find these angles. The angles are just showing me the different planes of the head. Everything I've done so far are just straight lines and I'm using my shoulder. This is such a 
you can get pretty accurate And I'm down on the watt finding this line. See, I'm, a lot of this is still my guess, some of these interior things, but I don't know if this distance is correct or not until I get it down. This against this. So my eye's now ping-ponging back and forth between this and this. My eye's going like this. Well, let, I'll show you what my eye's doing. That's my eye. So I'm looking at this distance, this distance, this distance. And I'm looking at this distance compared to this distance. Back and forth. That's why I put these together. That's why when I set up, I have the model. If she's sitting up there, she's right there. And there's like, bup, 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 bup. you'll get better. That's one way to get better quicker. It's just part of the ergonomics of how you're setting up. Now I see I, I missed this a little bit because because the neckline comes in here, it's actually beyond, this is a shadow line back there on the wall, so the, the, the neckline is actually right here. This is, this is back here, this is the background back here. But I haven't gotten any white paint out yet. Just kind of doing a wipe out kind of thing, wiping away. Now I notice let me check that angle. This is foreshortened, and I and I actually, I actually made it to, well, it's about, I guess it's about right. So this is in shadow down here. So these smaller, see I can travel down here, and then if I drop straight down like a plumb line, there's that point. And if I got this shape correct, then I can move down on mine. Plumb line, there's that point. See how I located that? Moving around what if, if what's going on is very accurate, then I can start to find these lines that will start to show me the different planes. The triangle shape right there. But the, what's cool about this head is everything like this little shapes. It's got to go slow enough. I would say the maybe the greatest problem that a lot of people have is they just don't have the patience. They want it all right now, just like we live in that. Don't we live in that kind of society right now? I want it and I want it now. We live in a fast-paced internet society. We can get stuff off the internet in a matter of two, you know, two seconds. It's not how a, a painting comes really deliberate and patient. Now if I check those shapes and I go back and forth and do that ping pong game, back and forth, I can still, at this point, I have a lot of things I can adjust. If this is, if this is too wide, even though I, you know, and I go back and I re-measure my, I, I do this when I have someone sitting in front of me, I always re-measure that head. I keep re-measuring because things drift, things move around while you're working. And then I check this now. See, I've got, I've got mine down now. See where the corner of the eye is. I go back and forth on these two shapes. You'll start to see them the different. If, if you want to look through your mirror, look through your mirror, look at those shapes. Do a ping pong through your mirror, back and forth. 
back and forth. This is the work. This is the work where you're going to get so good at this that, again, I say a lot of people aren't willing to do. They just kind of go shoot for the details. And then they wonder why they don't have any lightness. Then they spend a lot of time maybe fixing the eye when the eye is not the problem or the mouth. It happened at the beginning of the drawing. And once you learn these skills, there's other things to do. Uh, like later on, I'll show you how you can just start with massing in a portrait. And uh, so about this time, I would probably take a break. Well, let's, let's just go ahead and do that now. I'm going to take a, I'm, I'm going to just take a five minute break. And so this is what you would do too. I'm just trying to model what you guys would do. So we work, I've been working for maybe, you know, 50 minutes, an hour. You want to make sure you don't go much longer than that and take an actual break away from your drawing, your painting, and then come back to get a fresh I'll look. Just finish up a couple of things on this and show you, show you where I'd go from here. When you come back from a break, you want to make sure you spend some time measuring it and looking at it through a mirror. So I'm going to, you know, check these distances when you come back with fresh eyes, you, <clears throat> you see a lot of things you normally wouldn't have seen before because you're not looking at it for a while. It's always good to break your view from whatever you're doing and take breaks. Uh, so, so I noticed that this distance here, when I came back, it's a little bit short. And it might be, it might be because the... Uh, I think I've got the nose coming down here too far, so I can erase that a little bit with my Q-tip. That's that line right there. So I can make these little adjustments. So I think I'll spend about 10, 15 minutes in adjusting and fixing because the best time to adjust your painting is when you get back from a break. You'll see the values more accurately. You'll see the shapes more accurately <clears throat> and you'll be able to Make those adjustments. Again, this is what the people who get better faster do. I'm telling you, if you want to get better faster, this is what I've noticed after the many years of watching others teaching, experimenting. Stuff that it seemed like took me a long time, I've learned it now, so... Part of learning maybe just sometimes it takes time for us to learn these kinds of things, habits. So at this point, if I've got every, and I go in here and, and uh, you know, spend the 10 minutes or so, at least, making adjustments, looking at the overall shapes, I should have a lightness at this point. I don't have all the values in, but look at the angle of that wing of the nose right there. See, I just picked that up. Can you guys see that? Look at that angle, and look at mine. If I'm... You can see how easy and simple it is to adjust an angle of a line. And that's what I'm actually thinking about here. I'm adjusting the angle of a line, And that's it. I don't have to repaint the nose or repaint the eyelashes or the eyeball. Or, I'm not even thinking of those things. I'm, I'm thinking of, because if you do this properly, okay, if you do what I'm saying properly and you get really good at it, you won't have to keep repainting your eye or your nose or your mouth. It'll all be correct. So you'll just have the fun and joy of going in with the colors, you might have to be correcting colors and temperatures, but the drawing will be accurate. And I'm looking at the space between here and here. And now I can see mine is a little bit short, and it's because I was I didn't have that line 
have to make make a decision where that really is happening. So I'm going back and forth. The eye is going like that. <clears throat> now I can put this angle right there. That little angle. This is this is the underside. This is kind of where the nostril would live. You don't see it on this guy, obviously, but that's more accurate. So making these little adjustments and then once you've got that correct then you can come in here and find the value. Now, I've already got a light value on my board so it's not completely white and that might maybe I'll just decide that's this value for now. But I can see I've got to add a little bit of value over here and this is where I would start. If I need to work with some white paint that's fine. So I can get those values a little bit lighter or if I just want to scrub in some these two values are similar enough this one this one this one and this one that I'll treat that whole panel as one so values that are similar to each other I combine I weld together. That's all a little bit dark for, for what we're showing. So this is the wipe out if it's too dark. You can add some white paint to it. Or I'm just gonna I can always redraw those lines back in. There's a little ghost of them. But I want to come back in and sort of a paint by number now. Just where are the values that you're seeing? This is all gonna be a little more of a half tone here. And this is way too bright, so I'm gonna just like darken it just a little bit. And I'm, I'm comparing, contrasting values These two values are almost the same. I can almost combine the two, but one's a little lighter than the other. A little value there. This is definitely not the value of the underpainting. It's darker. Not very much paint on my brush. I'm not I'm kind of doing this without without white paint. But I'll probably go in and get some white paint now. I want to. What I want to show you is I want to show you how I build this eye, and then I think I'm going to probably finish up there. This is really important because when we're actually working from photos or actual people, uh, it's important to not go in there and draw the eye. This is what we do. We we go in there and draw the eye, and it's all flat and it doesn't look correct. And but you're built. It's a form. The eye is actually a sphere. If the eye is like a like almost the size of a golf ball stuck in our head so we got to think of it as another sphere but if you were just to see the uh some i'm making this nice and flat with the correct value that i see and then i could build that eye out of it so i might locate a few things first so back into my brush i can see where's this point here And then right down at a tiny bit of an angle, I can see that angle. There's the corner of that eyelid. I'm just scratching into it just to see where I'm at. So all I'm thinking about now are shapes. These are just shapes. I'm not thinking about the eye at all. They're just shapes. There's a shape there. There's a 
little shape that goes off down in here. And if I'm correct, it's kind of located in the, in the uh, correct place. I see this small sliver of a shape here. It happens to be the bottom of the eyelid. But it's a small shape. And I'm just scratching this in to see kind of how it looks, if that's correct. And I can go in and start adding a little bit of paint there. And I think at this point, I get a smaller brush. And then I'm going to add a little bit of uh, white now. So I can do a little bit of additive process. Try to, try to match the value I'm seeing. See, it's like a good movie. You don't have to give a lot of information. I can already see that there's an eye in there. You can see that's his eyelid. And then over here, this, this uh, shape is just a little bit less. That's a plane. That they're doing a planer, plane of the eye, plane of the eye, front plane, side plane. And then down here, it's a little bit lighter because it's catching the light of this overhead light coming down. I don't want to get it too light. Remember, this is... This is that simultaneous contrast you learn in Foundation 2, where everything that's surrounded by dark, you'll get it, your tendency is you'll, you'll want to get it too light. I'm going to get a, a better brush. I like these, uh, this is sort of like a long filbert brush. Look at this. It's a rosemary, but this one allows me to get in there, put little strokes of paint down. It's so important to have really good brushes that, that aren't so frayed and you know, some, some of those brushes are good for landscape and things, but, and even for portraits sometimes, but when you're doing these little shapes, you want to get a brush that holds holds the paint on there kind of nice together. So you can see the brush, the paint on the tip of my brush here. And I just go in here. Sometimes I, uh, you know, like mall sticks, sometimes people have mall sticks, like, you know, to hold, hold steady. Sometimes I just use my other arm like this. I've got my this one touching my canvas, so I'm resting my arm if I need to do that. Go back and paint the dark area. The stroke wasn't exactly what I wanted, but but the idea of, of, of little details like this is they're just they're still shapes. You got to keep in your mind about shapes. There's a little shape here that seems to appear to be, appears to be a little darker right here where it's turning under. And then the side of the, this is kind of a little more in shadow. We're going to see the, um, the actual ball of this eye is, is a little bit in, in light, but not by much. And you're going to get a cast shadow of that upper lid. It needs to drop down a little bit further. So I get enough information on there. I don't I don't get anxious. It's like, oh no, it's all wrong. I, I don't want to I don't want to see it that way. I want to see like, oh, okay, I've got that there. But now I can see I've given myself enough information to say I've got to I've got to drop this down a little bit further. I'm gonna clean that edge up down here. Drop that down a little bit. And come back in with this brush, and sometimes I'll get a couple of brushes going. Yeah, that's better. And then we see the bottom lid right here. And I can shape this right here, which is showing me where that where the bottom of that lid is. So that, that's a, a little lesson on how to build an eye.
little shapes, smaller shapes, turning the form. Not this, not going in there and drawing an eye like this. Don't do that. The little shapes, the little shape over here, if I see that dark shape here, happens to be a cast shadow. My goodness, how do you draw an ear? What's the shape of an ear? Well, it's just the shapes I see. And I try to put those in. Now you see if my drawing's correct, you see how things just kind of fall into place. And if I get in some light, I covered it up, but there's a little bit of a light spot there on the top of that plane. There's a top of the plane of the ear here. And this is kind of this is kind of where it gets fun. If if everything is lining up for you, then you can really start to make this thing sing. I've got a little bit of white paint, so. There's a plane right here. You see, there's a see the plane around the muzzle of the mouth. Plane, plane, plane. You don't see the other side very much, but and I see this plane, plane. These little, like this is where the side of that. This is uh, way too light. I can tell that this has got to be a little bit darker in here. Just that value, just a little bit. So there's a little adjustments you're doing here. So, and then so forth. And I would, keep, I would keep following and adjusting as I need to go. Uh, and, then the, and then the form really starts to come into play. There might be a, I don't really see it on this photo, but I know on the actual head, you might see a little more of a highlight on some of these areas where the light is the, is the most. Maybe a little bit of highlight in here. I'll just put a couple of highlights and then. A little bit lighter plane right here. Kind of shows the turn of the nose here. And then the wing of the nose is a little lighter because it's plane, the plane is up towards the light source. You see how that's working there. There's a plane right here that's turning under that's in reflective light. So that's a part of the shadow family. You can clean up little things here. Matter of fact, my nose is a little, little, sh little short. So I'm going to, and I can see that little distance right there. I just need a little more distance on mine. little adjustments okay I think that's good for now so I would still go from here and uh, adjust things and make sure my values are on but you notice how much time I want you to recognize <clears throat> that this demo we spent what an hour and a half and for about the first hour it was all preliminary stuff and did you see how fast the last half hour went did you see how fast it went when I just started filling in values with the shapes are correct? That's so satisfying. You see, that's the proportion of time spent. A lot of people spend a half an hour on their stage, their initial stages, and then they end up not spending an hour on the uh, smaller shapes and detail, but they end up spending two or three hours because they're fixing things. 
you know, we're, we're all working at this. Uh, so you can see the proportion of my time spent was most of my time was spent in the initial lay-in stage. Even if it's painstaking, I'm asking all of you to try it. Uh, it will improve your drawings. And again, it's about the patience, just as a review, a little patience, being intentional, being, uh, you know, uh, deliberate, and really measuring and, it, it, and uh, you know, getting away from it if you have to get away from it several times and come back with a fresh look using your mirror.